Hello everyone, time for Badger Workshop Tradition, the end of the year workshop tour. So we'll start over by the door. Actually, before I start, I should address the big change from last year. This workshop didn't exist. I was in a tent in the garden. So everything is brand new this year. Anyway, over by the door, we've got two machines. I've got my old start right drill press, pillar drill, and I've got an Axmas Professional bandsaw. And they're both on stands that I have made to incorporate extra storage. This is quite a small workshop, so maximizing storage space is key and also mobility. So I got rid of the stand this bandsaw was on and put it on something with wheels. And I also got the drill on wheels so I can pull both out when I want to use it. Under the bandsaw, I've got these Stanley cases. I'm a big fan of these and I have quite a few of them. And under the drill, I've got a couple of these Bisley drawer units and I made a couple of drawers of my own. Both of these systems have worked really well for me. Along from the bandsaw, I've got my record power air filter. I've got it on its side on the wall and I find it really works well like this. I had it like this in my old, old workshop and it just, in a small workshop, I think it uses the space well. It's a great thing for keeping it clean in here. Uh, I've got a little shelf and under it I have my long clamps that don't fit into drawers. On the floor below this I've got my Clark 8 inch planar thicknesser because I've been using it to plane some wood for a project that's coming up next year. Uh, I don't always leave it in here because I have a storage space as well which I'm going to show you in a bit. but. As I say, I've been using it, so it's in here at the moment, but it's small and light enough that I can easily just bring it in and out when I need it. Also behind it is loads of junk that, um, yeah, it just gets shoved along the wall. But uh, yeah, again, that really needs to go in the storage space, but that's a mess as well, but you'll see in a second. The rest of this back wall is blank, but leaning against it, I've got a couple of these shutters that I've made. They just go on with some clips and I tend to take them down when I'm filming just to let some light in. On a really bright sunny day, I might leave them on and open to restrict the light a little, but um, on a cloudy day like this, it's nice having the extra light. And when I'm done in here, I put them back in, shut them out, and then you've got a bit of extra security. No one can see in and there's obviously something blocking the window. Along the back wall, there's nothing apart from my fake neon badger sign that I made a couple of years ago. But what I should tell you is a bit about the workshop itself. So I built it kind of the end of January when it was very cold uh, and it took me about three weeks to do. Now the internal dimensions, I've just had a measure up, is 385 centimetres long and 240 exactly wide. So it's actually the smallest workspace I've had, but I've been getting on all right in here. I've just had to make a few changes to the way I work. And one of them is everything being mobile. So that brings us on to my table saw. It's a Bosch 18 volt table saw that I made this stand for so that I can easily pull it out and move it around. I've been super impressed with this thing. I really don't notice any power difference from a mains powered machine and it's quieter and portable. So I've gone for battery tools because I'm off grid out here. There's no mains power electric. So all my tools run off batteries apart from the few machines I have and I'll show you how I run those in a bit. Now, this is something I made very recently, and it's a new workbench. Underneath it, what I have is two of these five drawer Clark cabinets, one either side. One's mainly got my power tools in, the other clamps and other bits. I've also got underneath it my dust extractor and dust separator. So this has been fantastic. Lots of storage, keeps everything neat, and mobile, so that's kind of my key for everything in this workshop. 
Along this wall, I've got three windows. It's north facing, so you get light, but no direct sunlight. So it's not bad for filming, which was a big consideration for me. Above the windows, I've got a small shelf that was gonna be a nice kind of display, but with most things in the workshop, it turns into a bit of a dumping ground. So I have my track saw up there and a few kind of random bits, but then more on the other end, I've got what was supposed to be up there, kind of my hand planes. This was one of the last projects I did, it was just a simple little bit of storage for all my sanding discs and my sander. So the bench normally lives here under the windows, so the sander and the sanding disc are right above the bench. Something I grab all the time and the dust extractor is built into the bench. So there's not really a woodworking project where you don't use the sander, so it's nice that it's all very easy to get to. So in a small space like this, it's important to try and utilize every little bit of space. So I've got a tiny little gap between the windows here and I made a little rack that I've got a couple of Japanese pool saws on, a square. I've also got some rulers on the wall and a couple of pencil sharpeners just shoved there. In this last little gap, I've got my hammer rack with my hammers and mallets on and I've got a couple of spoke shaves above it. Oh, and there's a key for the band saw, so you can, uh, if you press the safety button in, you can lock it, which I don't do, but if I ever press it by mistake, that's where the key is to reset it all. So that brings us back around to the door where I've got my power supply. So I've got two of these battery banks. In fact, actually I've got a third one that's in the house, a little tiny one. So I've got an EcoFlow Pro, this I think can power up to 3,600 watts. Anyway, it means I could plug my bandsaw and a big twin motor dust extractor in at the same time, or my planar thickness on a dust extractor. It does everything I need it to do. Uh, at the moment, I've just got it running the lights in here and my neon sign. On the roof, I've got a 400 watt solar panel and the cable comes down and up through the floor and plugs in to recharge it. And it seems to have worked well. I'm, I've been using it this week to do a lot of planing and it's December and cold and wet and we even had a bit of snow. So it's not great for solar, but this is on 80 something percent. Um, a good sunny day will top that back up again. So I've not run it out yet or got anywhere close on top of it i've got a little anchor unit i forgot what the max this does but yeah it's great to have the smaller this is much more portable i can take this outside if i'm working and uh, it just gives me a backup so these have really worked well as an off-grid solution for me so i've not even been in here a year and i've changed a lot already but i'm really enjoying the space so far uh, today I'm wrapped up warm but I've got no heating on in here. I'm, I'm pretty comfortable but I've got a little gas heater. But a lot of people suggested uh, diesel heaters so that's something I might look into next year. All the walls are insulated, uh, ceilings insulated, floors insulated with acoustic insulation so I don't disturb the neighbours. I've got a few acoustic panels on the ceiling and that's to make the audio sound better in here and I really notice a difference when I record audio in other places. Um, so I think that's all I've got to show you from here. So I'll show you my other workspace. So I come out of the workshop and we just go around the side. And we come to the second thing I built this year, a shed. I prefer having a workshop and a storage space to keep the workshop neat and tidy, especially when you're doing YouTube videos. But two structures in one year, it's definitely been a busy one. So in here, I'm afraid to say, is a huge mess. It's where all my wood finishes, tools I'm not using, it's just a dumping ground. Next year, definitely my mission is to get this sorted out. And it's actually better than when I showed it a few weeks ago. But I really like having the two spaces, as I say. But yeah, just gotta try and keep this as neat as I try and keep the workshop. It's so messy in here, I can't even tell you the dimensions, but I know it's roughly 
uh, three meters by two point four. So those are my two Badger Workshop workspaces, but I actually have a third space that I set up this year as well. So let me show you that. And for this one, we've got to go into the house. And here we have my third workspace I've done this year, my kitchen. So I kind of did a little facelift of this, new shelves, new paint. And I've got a workbench from the old workshop as my kitchen island. And I've started a new YouTube channel, Kitchen Ramblings. So I'll stick a link to that down below. I've only been doing it about a month. So we've had only had a few videos, mainly Christmas cooking things, but lots more to come. So it's been an incredibly busy year for me, building the workshop, building the shed, doing up the kitchen and starting a new channel. Hopefully I'll calm down a bit next year. And when I do the tour in a year's time, maybe there'll be a few less changes, more just tweaking around the edges on organisation. So thank you to everyone for watching. Thank you to my patrons. Uh, please check out the new channel down below and I'll see you in a year's time for another tour.